The precautionary principle states, when an activity raises threat of harm to human health or the environment, precautionary measures should be taken even if, if some cause and effect relationships are not established scientifically. It is in this context that the proponent of the activity, rather than the public, should bear the burden of proof. This principle implies that you as a governing body have the social responsibility to protect the public's health. What you see here is a portable manure irrigation device. It is essentially a manure lawn sprinkler. Both industrialized agriculture, known as CAFOs, or concentrated animal feeding operations, and larger family farms have manure containment systems. Manure of yesteryear is very different than manure of today. This is that fecal and urine material. It is massive doses of antibiotics and drugs. It is barn cleaners and chemicals and it is additional additives. Additional additives are things from industrial waste. For example, slaughterhouses. The guts, the blood, the, the unused pieces of product are able to be dumped into manure lagoons. 10% of a lagoon's capacity can be industrial waste. So there, there is no such thing as manure that is manure anymore stated there are 150 known pathogens in manure, that those pathogens, pathogens do live in the lagoon, they do travel through our irrigation system, and they do become airborne around our homes. Uh, drinking contaminated water. Water consumption during recreational activities, meaning going to swim in the lake. And of course, fecal to oral mouth transmission means your kid's toys out in the front lawn. Any surface that manure drift lands on can be a possible transmission site for pathogens. Family homes that are adjacent to fields that are sprayed with manure run the risk of high levels of contamination. This includes your children's toys, your outdoor furniture, and your cooking surfaces. There are documented, documented accounts of drift contamination right here in central Wisconsin, and the Pakadaw Bee Supply and you folks have both those testimonials from the Central Sands area where two people had to be forced out of their home. Surface waters that you don't think about. Your swimming pool in your backyard, the puddles your children play in, and your pet's water dishes. The picture here is corn crop from right here in central Wisconsin that has been sprayed with manure irrigation. And you can see that the manure is there on the leaves. That is the same manure that holds the pathogens, the contaminants, and the chemicals from the lagoon. Puts a little perspective onto why you're supposed to wash your produce before you eat it. <laughs> our biggest concern in regards to air quality is for our children. Our children breathe 20 to 50 percent more oxygen than adults. Children tend to mouth breathe and they have more rapid respirations per minute than an adult. They are unable to detoxify their systems. Lung damage in children is irreversible. That is a picture taken of peat mull flowage blue-green algae. That is a documented source of water contamination um, due to manure. Groundwater contamination here, if you look at the picture down on the right-hand side, that is the Kiwani River one year ago. Once upon a time, you could see your toes in the Kiwani River. The upper picture is liquid manure coming through the tap of a home. Wood County does not want to be the next Kiwani County, and we need to hear that loud and clear. That is a home infected with flies. Residents around uh, animal feeding operations and fields that are sprayed with manure have a much higher level of fly infestation than anywhere else. That's a Purdue research in 2007. Flies land on manure. Flies then land on your food. You eat your food and you become best friends with your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> But what I'm saying is what we're looking for is we're looking for it so that we actually have some scientific that goes with it. And if the scientific comes up with it, fine. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what it is. 
Let's see what can be done. But that's what we're seeing today. One of the things that we look at more and more is the fact that when we talk about antibiotics or other things that track through the manure tract or anything like that, one of the things you should be looking at, the antibiotics in cows today is tremendously, tremendously lower than it's ever been in history. Because what it is, is it's absolutely against the law to go anywhere near anything that used to be done years ago. And so to say that there's a lot more antibiotics there, no, it can't be. But the other is, that as we look at this whole thing, we just look closer and closer at, you know, is there people that have done things like this wrongly? Sure. There's people that travel at 80 miles an hour on a road that's posted at 55. It's the idea, did you get away with it? Extreme setbacks by state law. There are states that have larger ones, but many of our neighboring states, and many of those states in the Midwest, have much more narrow setbacks. Right now it's 500 feet. What had really happened to them with the spraying of manure? And um, I'm not sure that that farm practiced the right setback, but it wouldn't have been important if they had, because these people were probably well over a thousand feet from where the spraying had been done. And the drift absolutely ruined their lifestyle, ruined their home, and eventually they had to leave their home. There is no research to suggest that they're going beyond the setbacks that are already in place. In fact, there's research to suggest the contrary. Idaho, where this technology has been used for 10 years, very extensively, Idaho has pretty much the fastest growing dairy business uh, grouping in the United States right now. Well, these are 10 years, you don't have any documented cases of pathogens being transferred in this, in the method that we've been told to be worried about. And they've been using this, again, very broadly throughout that state for a much longer period of time. They've had research done to try to adopt best practices. I'm concerned about some, what I think is misleading information, okay? These pictures show one operation that would not be at all typical. Ron McCarroll took these pictures on June 28th. This is the CAFO that the Wasaki operation runs in Armenia. <clears throat> this is a center pivot. This is the same uh, corporation or family corporations that wants to build a CAFO in Saratoga. So one operation that would not be at all typical. Um, and as he said, this is the Wasakis that did this in their farm. And in the letter to me and every citizen in our community, they said their current farm is going to be a copycat of what they're going to put in Saratoga. And so these are the current practices that they're using. They would not be at all typical. And we are not an ag community. We have trees, we have citizens, we have homes, and we have children. <coughs> Four capos for large farms does regulate how that manure is applied very strictly and very carefully through nutrient management programs. And, and they have to have a nutrient management plan in place and they have to stick to it. That's a Wisconsin picture. Which I think that's right, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I'm just telling you that this is not typical. A corporation that is continually violating ordinance 101.01, .01, which is a county ordinance in Wood County that says you cannot spray irrigation water across a town, county, or public, or state highway. Okay. Uh, I've reported that many times. Okay, I'm done. Okay. I would argue that the precautionary principle is really about uh, forgetting about science. Let's just not care if there's not a cause and effect. Right, I, I agree, but science doesn't suggest that people are actually at risk. So I would ask that I be allowed to present the draft. 
resolution knowing it probably will change. All those in favor of sending this resolution to the county board, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. It will go to the county board. with just one quote um, taken from an article discussing pathogen and antibiotic uh, resistance between humans when um, in the vicinity of manure. And that is from Don Huber. He is an agricultural scientist and expert, an expert in microbial ecology, and the quote reads like this. Future historians may look back upon our time and write not about how many pounds of pesticides that we did or didn't apply but how willing we are to sacrifice our children to jeopardize the future of generations to this massive experiment that we call genetic engineering that is based on flawed science and failed promises just to benefit the bottom line of a commercial enterprise. So it was with this knowledge that I ask you that you pass a resolution banning spray irrigation of manure for Wood Thank you.